The Global Positioning System, or GPS, is a network of 30 satellites orbiting about 20,000 kilometers above the Earth. And they send out continuous signals that tell where the satellite is and at what time the signal was sent. What the receiver does, the receiver takes that signal, decodes it, and calculates how far away the receiver is from the satellite. By comparing four different satellite signals, the receiver is able to determine exactly where it is. So what we're going to do here is do a quick little demo of that on a world map. And because we can't really do the three-dimensional version of it, what we're going to do is, is kind of pretend the world is flat. It involves, the mathematics involves just using Pythagorean theorem. And other than that, it's just working with scales on a map. So let's say I get a signal, I'm somewhere in Europe, and I get a signal from a satellite that says, I am 20,000 kilometers above Stockholm, and it takes about 68.27 milliseconds for the signal to travel to you. So where could you possibly be? Well, by using a little bit of Pythagorean theorem, I can calculate that. I can figure out, okay, so the satellite is 20,000 kilometers above, and the signal is going to travel along the hypotenuse of the triangle. So I can calculate how far across on my map I would be. And so when I do that, I get a value. And then according to my map, I have to scale it. So I start at Stockholm, which is right here. And I draw a circle. And my circle goes out. And basically what this says is that anywhere along that circle, I could be. Now, my receiver looks for another satellite. And with 30 satellites, there's always at least six to eight satellites visible. So it lis listens to another satellite. And another satellite says, I'm over Rome. And I, it takes 67.67 milliseconds to arrive from Rome. So now I put my pin in Rome, and I draw a circle around Rome. And what I see is there are two places where the, cir the circles overlap. Those are my two possible locations. So now all I need is a third satellite. And that third satellite is going to tell me where I am for sure. And so the third satellite in my pretend model here says, I'm over Dublin. And it takes 67.59 seconds to reach you. So where are you? And you see that the three circles overlap above Portugal. In fact, above Lisbon. Now this is just a simple activity you can do. It's actually a fun game. You can actually have the students can actually hide themselves and give clues to each other to say, can you find me? Um, and what happens in real life is you have to have a fourth signal. And that fourth signal is to verify the time and the altitude. And, uh, and that puts it into the three dimensions. But other than that, this is a, a thing called trilateration. And this is how the GPS signal, d the GPS system, determines. Maths is all around us. It's almost impossible to think of something that's made without the help of mathematics. Buildings, transport, technology, medicine, even clothes and food all rely on numbers, measurements and sums. Early pioneers discovered and explored the world using great ingenuity and varied mathematical skills, navigating by the sun and stars to find their way. By measuring their position and relation to key points on Earth, they could navigate and travel thousands of kilometers. The surface of the Earth can be divided like a chessboard with the lines of latitude and longitude. Using maths and a tool called a sextant, navigators could find their latitude and longitude by measuring the angle between two objects relative to the horizon it was very complicated, involving calculations, celestial maps, and charts. 
The principle was that an object would be positioned above a certain point of latitude and longitude at a particular time of day. This made positioning possible. Now, every point on each line has its own number, known as a coordinate. So, it's possible to find anywhere on the globe with just two numbers, where the lines cross. Modern computers using similar maths can find any location using the Global Positioning System, or GPS. This network of 24 satellites 18,000 kilometers above the Earth is capable of locating any position to within three and a half meters and tracking journeys to any destination. GPS was originally developed for the US military, but is today available in numerous vehicles and electronic devices. So how does GPS calculate your position? With the same mathematical measurements that our ancestors used. Let's say you want to find your current position using GPS. At all times, you are in the line of sight of at least four satellites. A minimum of three locate your position using latitude and longitude. By measuring the distance and angle between three satellites and your smartphone, they can pinpoint you exactly. The fourth calculates your altitude. This network of orbiting satellites constantly transmits signals at the speed of light, so all this happens in the blink of an eye. Complex Maths then visualizes your position in a 3D landscape, even if you are at the top of a mountain. GPS technology can now be found everywhere. The same technology also makes it possible to remotely pilot small vehicles and has turned the driverless car into a reality. Maths made it possible for our ancestors to discover the world. And today, maths makes it easier than ever for us to travel the globe using whatever form of transport we wish. At over 20,000 kilometers above sea level is a constellation of satellites, each orbiting Earth every 11 hours and 58 minutes. These satellites are continuously beaming data down to us on Earth, which is in turn received by devices such as your phone or navigational units in your cars, allowing you to see where you are on the planet. There are a lot of misconceptions about how GPSs actually work, an example being that your phone and the GPS satellites are both talking to each other. So let's get down to it. How do GPSs work? GPS stands for Global Positioning System, which works through trilateration, not triangulation or multilateration, which is commonly misconceived. There are many different types of navigational satellite systems from countries across the world, but the most popular and commonly used system is Navstar, which is the USA system. There are, however, Russian, Indian, Chinese and European equivalent systems, although the Indian and Chinese systems sit in a geosynchronous orbit above their countries, which means they are not worldwide systems. The Navstar system, which is simply referred to as GPS, is what we will be focusing more on, although most phones and devices tend to have the capabilities to use both GPS and GLONASS. GPS satellites are set up in such a way that from almost anywhere on the surface of Earth, you should have a direct line of sight of at least four GPS satellites. This is quite important on the basis that GPS point positioning requires at least four satellites to calculate three position coordinates and the clock deviation. As GPS units are receivers, there needs to be something sending some sort of signal to devices such as your phone to receive. Each GPS satellite broadcasts a navigational message towards Earth which contains an extremely accurate timestamp, which is obtained through an atomic clock which is on board these satellites. And the satellites also broadcast their position at the time of broadcast, with all GPS signals broadcasting at 1.5752 GHz and 1.2276 GHz. These two bits of information allow you to work out your position on Earth. With these satellites all sending exceptionally accurate time down to Earth, your phone or GPS receiver can compare the difference of time between when the signal was sent to when it was received to work out the distance between you and the satellite. By multiplying this time difference with the speed of light, as the signal is sent at the speed of light, you can begin to get the distance away you are from that satellite. As these satellites are also sending whereabouts they are, you can begin to draw spheres around the satellites, with you being somewhere on the outer border of that sphere. As we introduce more GPS satellites into the mix, we begin to get closer to where we are. By calculating the time differences between these satellites, we move from having no idea where we are, to being able to pinpoint where we are, 
typically down to 5 to 10 meters on average, with the potential error being around 15 meters. There are a lot of factors which escalate the potential error, but the most significant is due to the ionosphere, a part of the upper atmosphere extending from 60 kilometers to 2000 kilometers, where free electrons occur frequently enough to have an appreciable influence on the proportion of electromagnetic waves passing through this layer. This error is substantially smaller when satellites are directly overhead, compared to being larger the closer the satellites are to the horizon relative to you, as the path between you and the GPS satellites goes through more of the atmosphere compared to being directly overhead. Even things such as small variations in the atomic clocks found on board these satellites can cause major errors. A clock error of 1 nanosecond can translate to a 1 foot or 30 centimeter miscalculation. Then the theory of relativity kicks in, with the atomic clocks ticking ever so slightly slower than clocks which are stationary on the ground, which translates into a 7 microsecond a day delay. General relativity then also kicks in, with the effect of the gravitational frequency shift being far greater than the 7 microsecond per day delay due to the velocity relative to Earth. As the theory states that a clock which is closer to a massive object will be slower than a clock further away, the atomic clocks on board the GPSs are faster by about 45.9 microseconds per day. Combining the 7 microsecond a day delay due to the satellite's velocity relative to Earth and the GPS is being further away from Earth, this adds up to a 38 microsecond delay, which if left uncorrected would translate through to a 10 km a day pseudo-range error, rendering GPSs invalid from the get-go if this was not to be taken into consideration. This is compensated by the GPS's clock's frequencies being slightly slowed down from 10.23 MHz to 10.22999999543 MHz, to cancel out the effects of relativity. So next time you turn on your GPS on your phone or other device, you should now realize just how much physics and maths is going in towards you finding your own location. Thank you for watching, be sure to